Nigeria is introducing a new tax on phone calls, data usage and texts, despite the increase in the cost of living for many Nigerians. And South Africa has formally complained to the World Trade Organization about restrictions on its citrus imports to the European Union. On today's Crypto Watch, we focus on the future of cryptocurrencies across the continent. I'm Tolulakwe Adileru Balogun. Welcome to Business Edge. Let's get started with African business headlines. South Africa has halted tariffs on poultry for 12 months as part of measures to ease food inflation. The government suspended duties on imports of chicken from Brazil, Denmark, Ireland, Poland and Spain because of the impact it may have on the price. Chicken is one of the more affordable sources of protein in South Africa. Nigeria's Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Isa Pantami, has said he is against attempts by the federal government to introduce a 5% excise duty on telecommunication services. According to him, the move would impact the sector and Nigerians negatively. He made the comments while speaking at the maiden edition of the Nigerian Telecommunications Indigenous Content Expo, organized by the Nigeria Office for Developing the Indigenous Telecom Sector an agency under his ministry. The Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited reports that from January to June of this year, a total of 2.7 billion Naira was deposited into its accounts with the Central Bank of Nigeria. Of that amount, $645 million was for dividend paid by the Nigerian Liquefied Natural Gas Company Limited. Now, this information contradicts the CBN's claims that the weakening value of the Naira was caused by the non-remittance of funds into Nigeria's foreign reserves by the NNPC. Tanzania has exported a record 10,000 tons of meat to the Middle East in the first six months of this year. This offers prospects of a reliable market there as only 7,000 tons were exported during the whole of 2021. Livestock and Fisheries Minister Mashimba Indaki explained that by December this year, the tonnage will certainly be double the amount exported until June. Those are a few business headlines for you at this time. A quick time out, and when we come back, Nigeria is introducing a new tax. What does this mean for the Nigerian consumer? The conversation after this. Nigerians will soon be paying more for calls, data, and texts. The tax on telecommunications services will increase to 12.5% as the government announced plans to implement a 5% inclusive excise duty on services rendered by the sector. While it is not a new excise duty, it was not implemented in 2020 when it was placed on the books. It's not just this tax that's putting pressure on Nigerians and their households. There have been calls for the government to review the taxes, levies, and duties that are in play across the country. Joining me from Lagos, Nigeria, is Taiwo Oyedele, fiscal policy partner and Africa tax leader at PwC. Taiwo, it's good to see you again on Business Edge. Thank you for joining me. You're welcome, Tony. It's a pleasure to be back on your program. So let's start quickly with the fact that this is not a new tax. What we're talking about now is that the government has announced plans to implement um, or rather enforce this tax now. So it came onto the books in 2020 as part of the review of the Nigeria's tax regime. Why wasn't it implemented then and why is now the time for us to see implementation? Yeah, very good question. So I think uh, you would be right to say it's a new tax. It would also be right if you say it's not a new tax. Um, first and foremost, there was the 2017 National Tax Policy that was approved by the Federal Executive Council. Um, looking at Nigeria system generally and with more focus on, on taxation, and it says that Nigeria needs to um, focus more on indirect taxes. Uh, indirect taxes are these kind of taxes you impose on you know, consumption, uh, where you then finally pass the burden to the consumers. 
So in the 2020 Finance Act, um, it was introduced for the very first time in our laws. Uh, it has never happened in the history of Nigeria that there is excise duty on services. So Nigerians are, of course, familiar with excise duty on tobacco, alcohol, and even also uh, more recently, non-alcoholic beverages. But for services, this was the first time. So it was introduced by legislation in 2020. The lawmakers gave the power to the president to determine the rate. And no rates were determined uh, as of 2021 when the 2020 Finance Act came into effect uh, until now. So by the virtue of the fiscal policy measures and tariff adjustments um, that was issued uh, was dated 1st of March 2022, a few months ago, with an effective date of 1st of April, the president then gave um, the Minister for Finance, Budget and National Planning the directive to issue the um, policy measures. In that document, it was then indicated that telecommunication services that are regulated by the Nigerian Communication Commission, uh, including postpaid and prepaid services, will be liable to exercise duty of 5%. And like you said in your introduction, this will add up to the additional or the existing, I should say, 7.5% VAT, making a total of 12.5%. So this tax, the reason why it hasn't been implemented before was because no rate was indicated. You can't implement a law, a tax, when there's no rate. And in that regulation that was issued this year, even though it became effective on 1st of April, there was a 90 days grace period provided, and that's what had pushed it till July. So it is the attempt to enforce the collection of this, this tax uh, in July, which is just uh, you know uh, a few a few days ago we got into August, is the reason why people are now paying attention. But to be honest, it's been with us for over a year. So we'll get into the issue of when and how to tax, because that's a major part of the conversation for taxation across the continent, not just in Nigeria. But let's look particularly at the telecommunications sector. And it's been one that consistently has delivered high uh, growth for Nigeria. It's a sector where small and medium scale businesses quite well operate and operates well. But it reportedly grew about 14.5 percent in the first quarter of this year. In terms of an impact of this additional tax now on this sector, what do you think it will be? Yeah, and I like the context that you're bringing on board. Uh, we always have to take a step back, and I say this um, often, that government has to be very careful that when you're introducing taxes, uh, you must convince yourself whether you're taxing seed or whether you're taxing fruits. It makes a world of difference um, you know, between the two. So even though the telecom sector um, has grown significantly uh, since, I think, 2001, uh, a little over 20 years now, particularly during the COVID period, uh, it was like a lifesaver for, for the economy. You know, not only small businesses, everyone, uh, even the informal sector, everyone survived uh, the way we did because of the telecom sector. Um, if you look at data that is available, some of it provided by the World Bank, trading economics and all of that suggests that the revenue of the telecom sector to GDP ratio in Nigeria is about 2.63%. Um, some developing economies like Kenya have it at 9.9%. South Africa is close to 5%. Even some developed economies like the US, the UK, they have between 3 plus to 4%. What does that mean? It means that even though the telecom sector seems to be doing well in Nigeria, it's still at the growth phase, it's still growing, and therefore we should allow it to grow. Um, my thinking would be that this tax seems to be coming at the wrong time. And one of the things I recommended to them is if you really have to do it, why then don't even start with post-paid services? Uh, usually people who do post-paid are not the poorest people, maybe they can afford an extra 5%, yeah. but to then impose it on everyone and everything regulated by the NCC, including data, including calls, um, I just don't know how that sits well uh, within the context of what we're dealing with today. 
So I find it interesting that the Minister of Digital Communication of Communications and Digital Economy, Isa Pantami, uh, said that this will negatively impact the sector, and he's actually against it. And we've also heard from the chairman of the Association of Licensed Telecommunication Owners of Nigeria, Gwenga Adenayo, and says that the burden will definitely be passed on to consumers. We've seen taxation change consumer behavior. So do you think that when Nigerians start to realize that whatever they're paying in terms of data and phone calls has changed, we might see a change in their behavior and their usage, which would possibly affect the revenues of this sector? That is certainly um, a yes. Um, you know, taxes would always, always impact on uh, consumers' behavior, even when they don't want to. Uh, the reason being that their resources are limited. What's going to happen in this case, you know, very different from, uh, you know, tangible products uh, where you can almost see the impact of the tax. For telecommunication, what's going to happen is those who are buying, you know, recharge cards, I know most people don't buy cards anymore, but imagine those who are buying recharge cards for 100 naira, they'll still find the recharge card is still 100 naira. Uh, 1,000 naira cards will still be 1,000 naira card. What's going to happen is that it will run out faster than before by 5% because the tax is not an additional amount, it's factored into the consumption that you make. And then if you normally will spend 1,000 a month on recharge card, you can no longer make the number of calls you make before. So you have to make some adjustment, which could mean other things will suffer, but then you also consume a little less in terms of telecommunication services. So it would have an impact uh, on the revenue in the sector. Uh, one other issue where the sector has been talking about is the multiplicity of taxes they are having to deal with. Yes. According to them, they said they have about 39 different taxes. So one would have thought that government should actually pay attention to that and say, wow, why don't you come and let's talk about these taxes? So imagine repealing about 25 of the taxes they are having to deal with, and you replace it with one excise duty, even if it's 10%. The, the efforts to then resist will be significantly reduced. But you can't just keep introducing new taxes when you're not addressing the issues facing the sector. Um, and the minister saying that he's against it, and again, uh, if you look at it from a broader perspective, it's an indication, and we tend to see this often under this administration where you don't see that coordination. It, it looks weird uh, for a government to introduce uh, a policy and then the minister says they don't like it. Uh, but I think it is what it is. Maybe he's speaking as, as an individual rather than a member of the cabinet that he did introduce this tax. So I like the point uh, that you made about the 39 taxes. I was going to go there because it's the telecommunication sector uh, representatives at, um, for the association that has said that. But also when we talk to them, because we've had conversations, they've talked about the rising cost of diesel. They've talked about security um, of their installations and equipment being an issue as well. And just overall, the prevailing economic headwinds. But 39 taxes in a sector, a sector, as you said, that's still growing. Do you think that then points us to a direction where we could say that the telecommunications industry is actually overtaxed in Nigeria? I, I would say so, even though naturally, you know, my, my instinct is to always rely on data uh, to, to make my own comments. Um, I have to say to you that in East Africa, for example, despite uh, the data I give about Kenya having like 9.9 percent um, you know, their GDP being from telecommunication services, which, which shows that they're really doing well, um, they, their excise duty rates are in double digits, right? So it's 15%, even 18% in, in East Africa. Um, so their tax rates are very high. But then, you know, everything has to be uh, contextualized. Mm. So they don't have to worry about diesel as much as we have to in Nigeria. They don't have to worry about 39 different taxes in East Africa because they don't have these complications and confusion we have by three levels of government all trying to tax anything that breathes and moves, right? So whereas if you then look at it from the lens of the fact that you pay those formal taxes to government, 39 of them or whatever it is that the industry says it is, on top of that, you pay informal taxes to non-state actors. Many of them on their facilities, their infrastructure, the mass and all of that, are having to settle people and those things don't go to government. Mm -hmm. On top of that, you have implicit taxes where you have to do what government should ordinarily be doing for you. If you combine those, the formal, informal and implicit taxes together, 
I will say confidently that every sector, including the telecoms in Nigeria, is indeed overtaxed. All right, Ty, we're going to take a break. You've been one of those who've been very vocal about how we are taxing poverty in Nigeria. And I want us to go there as we expand this conversation. Yet another tax that's going to hit Nigerian consumers, literally everyone across Nigeria, very hard, especially at a time when the cost of living has increased and the Naira has lost value. The conversation will continue after this. You're watching Business Edge. Do stay with us. My guest is Taiwo Oyedele, fiscal policy partner and Africa tax leader at PwC, as we look at Nigeria introducing a new tax, a telecom tax, that's going to increase the excise duty on phone calls, text messages, and of course, data usage for Nigerians. Now, Taiwo, you've been one of those who's been very vocal about how you feel that the country is taxing poverty. And I want us to pick up on this. This is a tax that's coming at a time when the Naira has lost value, the cost of living has risen. For those who have to use um, diesel, diesel is at 800 Naira and above. We had fuel shortages just a short while ago. We still have electricity issues. The cost of food has continued to rise with food inflation being high. And we've also seen Nigeria's debt servicing outpacing um, its revenue. So when you put all of that into context, there's a how and a when conversation. But first, why do you think that it seems to be Nigeria is taxing poverty? How do you see that happening? Mm. Yeah, so there's never a convenient time to impose taxes. So I think it's natural and it's to be expected that anytime you want to impose a new tax or you want to raise the rate of an existing one, people will normally push back. So, but as a government, um, policymakers must look at hard data and then have an objective as to what they're trying to accomplish. And I think these things are fairly laid down in the 2017 National Task Policy. One of the things that we aim to do as a country is to protect the poor and vulnerable. How we interpret that into the policies we introduce is a different ballgame. Um, the reality is that you cannot give what you don't have. In other words, if you're poor, you have nothing to give. That is why many countries will have a social security scheme where, in fact, you provide that safety net for people who can't take care of themselves so they can meet, meet their basic needs. The Abraham Maslow theory talks about physiological needs, you know, things around food, things around shelter and security. And people have said, and I do agree, that if that theory was developed today, data and telecommunication would be in the same category almost as food. So when you then impose a new tax, and you haven't talked about the poorest people who are just trying to survive, some people are just doing their informal sector micro business that is powered by this telecommunication just to earn 1,000 naira to take care of their family a day. So which is why I made the point before, if you were being intentional as, as government, what you could have done is to start this task by looking at the people at the middle and maybe even the upper class who normally would do a postpaid package. Or alternatively, you could create a threshold per month and say, if your consumption of telecommunication services is 10,000 around, I'm just saying that number for the mm. sake of this uh, you know, explanation, if your consumption is 10,000 naira or less in a month, you don't pay this tax. Once you spend more than 10,000, on the extra amount you spend, you then pay the 5%. That way you're sure that the poorest people in Nigeria are, are likely to spend 10,000 naira on telecommunication when many of them only earn about 30,000 for a whole month to take care of the entire family. So this intentionality I did not see, and it's quite unfortunate. If we continue in this pattern of just introducing taxes without looking at the social aspect and whether we are protecting people who are poor, we will very quickly create a social problem which can actually even bring down the government uh, like we've seen in, in places like Sri Lanka. And I hope that doesn't happen because it might then be too late at that point to make the corrections that we should have made before. All right, Tao, before I let you go, let's expand a little bit. So if we're saying that there should be some kind of intentionality in this tax conversation, a how and a when considered, as well as the most poorest and vulnerable, the question then is, where do we expect a country such as Nigeria to get money? As I said earlier, debt servicing has outpaced revenue. We're not benefiting from high oil prices as it is right now. 
uh, GDP growth rate is around 2% in 10 years, but our population growth rate has outpaced that to be about 3% um, every year. And you have a population about 200 million and growing. How do we finance such a country as Nigeria? Top three ways if we're saying that taxation has to be done in a much more deliberate and intentional manner. Awesome question. Top three. One, uh, you have to stop the bleeding. So the country is bleeding, especially from the over bloated uh, petrol subsidy, right? And uh, now going into, we had figures around 6.7 trillion for next year, and I still can't get my head around it. And uh, that's more than the non oil taxes collected by federal government, FRS, and all the 36 states and all the local governments. Um, in addition to that, you have also bleeding from the FX arbitrage. So you take government's FX and you say it's 415, when indeed some people are playing around and going to sell it at 700 and, and something naira in the black market. That's government that is losing out in the process. You also have instances like the likes of the, the refinery, where even without producing or refining anything, we spent over 100 billion maintaining it. And the GMD of NMPC said, even when the refineries are working, they take product, they take fuel uh, crude of $100 and they produce refined product of $97. So when they're working, uh, we lose even more money than when they're not. Mm. You need to deal with all of this. Number two, you need to do harmonization. So at the moment, what you find is all manner of taxes have been introduced. In fact, over the past few weeks alone, the National Assembly have introduced two new taxes. First was NYC scheme. They said we should impose taxes on companies to fund NYC. And then just before their recess, a few days ago, they passed another law and they said, let's introduce a levy on companies to fund uh, Nigerian social investment programs, whatever that means. We can't continue like that. What you need to do is to cut down the number of taxes to few broad-based high-yielding taxes. And then harmonize the number of agencies that are collecting those revenue. So as of today, all manners of MDs are collecting revenue. In fact, not only are they not remitting, even when they withhold from customers and their contractors, they don't remit to government. So if you harmonize all of that and have one agency per level of government, at the federal level, let it be only FRS, even customs, should be a department under the FRS. And then that gives you more visibility and accountability. People would actually pay less and government will collect more. So government's money is not in the you know, bottom of the ladder. It's in the middle and upper class and in companies and MDAs because government has to ensure that they use data for intelligence. So when I have houses here and there, bank accounts here and there, Nigeria and abroad, and I pay 10,000 naira tax, government will say, by the way, we know who you are and you should be paying millions, not 10,000 naira. We need to do that. And Nigeria will be surprised. We can easily raise our revenue by up to 200% in my view within three years. All right, Taiwo Yedele, it's always a pleasure having conversation with you and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you, Tojo. All right. And a tax conversation, as my guest has said, it's one that's difficult to have. When people hear taxes are increasing, they never want it. But there's a reason that tax is one of the surest things in the world. It's because it is necessary for economic development. The how and the why is what African countries need to get right. You're watching Business Edge. Up next is International Business News. Let's see what's happening. Now, crude oil prices dropped again on Tuesday as investors absorbed a bleak outlook for fuel demand, with data pointing to a global manufacturing downturn just as major crude producers meet this week to determine whether to increase supply. Brent crude futures fell 77 cents to $99.26 a barrel, while WTI crude futures eased 67 cents to $93.22 a barrel. The slide came after Brent futures slumped on Monday. Gold rose to the highest level since early July as investors braced for a stormy period in U.S.-China relations with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi heading for Taiwan. The precious metal often benefits from bouts of geopolitical turbulence, and the Pelosi trip only adds to tailwinds that have helped gold rebound from a 15-month low. A reversal in the dollar's rally and growing fears about the global economy have also aided its price. The Bank of England says it will act forcefully if needed to stop the surge in inflation from turning into a long-term problem. 
meaning it could deliver a rare half percentage points interest rate rise as soon as this week. The BOE's rate setters might feel that they should raise rates by 50 basis points after other central banks pushed up borrowing costs sharply in recent weeks, despite the risk of an economic slowdown or a recession. Britain's main inflation measure hit a 40-year high of 9.4% in June, prompting some economists to push up their forecasts for inflation's peak to 12%. Twitter has subpoenaed records from Morgan Stanley and other financial firms as part of its legal fight with Elon Musk over his cancelled $44 billion acquisition of the social media platform. Morgan Stanley was Musk's chief financial advisor on the proposed deal and pledged up to $5.5 billion in financing. In a series of subpoenas posted on the Delaware Chancery Court, Twitter also sought documents from the Bank of America, Barclays, BNP Paribas, Citigroup, and several other banks that committed to backing Musk acquisition. And up next, a story that has international trade ramifications. South Africa is not happy with the European Union over its citrus import rules. The details after this. <laughs> 